Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So if we look at the diagram below, we have right triangle. We're going to look at the larger right triangle ABC. And the right angle is at A. Okay, and the theorem states that the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle forms two triangles that are similar to each other and then also similar to the original triangle. So when I draw altitude AD, that forms the right triangle on the left, ABD with right angle here at D, and right triangle ACD with right angle at D. And so all three of those triangles are similar, okay? I want you to think of this point where the altitude intersects the hypotenuse as a point of rotation. So if we take this smaller triangle, the right triangle ABD, and we rotate it about the point D, it's going to rotate and land here. So this angle with one dot, okay, it's going to land, but then we're also going to make it bigger. So it's going to rotate along here, so AD lands about here, and then again we're going to make it enlarge it a little bit so that angle would land here, and then this angle here is going to land there, okay? So once again, think of that point as a point of rotation. So down below, I have the same uh, picture or that same picture more or less three times because you have the different size triangles within. And sometimes it's hard to tell, for instance, which triangle is the smaller and larger. So for me, this looks like the smaller triangle, larger within the big one. This one looks a little bit smaller than the one on the right, which looks larger. And then in this one, it's really clear that this is the smaller right triangle and that's the larger within the big one, okay? so. Going back to when you draw the altitude, so let's highlight in each case that in the large right triangle, this segment here is our altitude, and I'm going to make my pen a little bit thinner. So we have a right triangle here as well. And this triangle, this is the altitude to the hypotenuse of the larger triangle, ALT. And I'll note the right angle on this side as well. And this segment here is the altitude to the big right triangle. Again, I'm going to label that ALT and put in the right angle. And so each time the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse, it creates two segments. So we have that segment and this segment of the altitude, which I'll call X and Y. In this triangle, the altitude forms this segment, or splits the hypotenuse into two segments, which I'll call X and Y again. And in the last triangle, again, that altitude creates two segments that I'm going to call X and Y again. Okay? So let's also uh, before we actually write the proportions that goes along with it, let's know um, what I just said out loud and noted with the X and Y, that the altitude divides the hypotenuse into two segments. For your notes. And now we'll take a look at the proportion for each. Okay, let's go back to that point of rotation. So here's this angle right here. Okay, if I take and rotate this triangle along this point of rotation and bring it around, this angle is going to land right here after you rotate and dilate, I should say. This angle right here, uh, where the 90, again, lands on the 90 degree angle, and then this small angle right here, once you turn it and enlarge it, is gonna land right there. So I like to note the congruent angles first because just like the very first day of notes on day one, I use those angles to determine which sides correspond. 
So this angle here, after we rotate it along that point and then dilate, it's going to land right there. And then this angle right here, once you rotate, dilate, would land there. You could go the ver uh, reverse direction. So this angle right here, once you rotate, okay, slide that triangle around, will land right here. And then this angle, once you slide and then make it bigger, would land here. Okay? So if I go back to the proportion, I'm looking at those triangles in which I have two corresponding sides. In each case, if we take a look at the big triangle, the original right triangle, I'm not given those two legs, okay? So in order to write a proportion, I need at least, or I need two sets of corresponding sides. So when we write the proportion, we're not going to use the larger triangle in this one, um, which is going to be the same for all, because remember, I just redrew the same triangle in just three different ways. So we're not given the legs in that one, and you can see we're not given the lengths of the legs in that one. So in each case, uh, we're going to use the two triangles within. So let's take a look at the first triangle, or the smaller one in this case. We're given the altitude and a leg, okay? So I am going to write ALT for altitude. So in mine, I'll write altitude to leg in my proportion below. So I'm going to do altitude to the one leg, which is X. Now the altitude correspond between the angles with two dashed lines and the right angle. Over here, um, between two dashed lines and the right angle, two dashed lines, right angle, is my Y. Okay? The X segment corresponds to the angles with one dashed line, right angle. So one dashed line, right angle, is the altitude. Okay, and the next one, um, this time I'll put the X up top. So in this smaller triangle, I'm looking at this sign here, which the X has the one line right angle. So one line right angle uh, would correspond to the altitude on the right side. So then if I do the bottom or the denominator of my left fraction, right angle two lines is the altitude of the triangle on the left. Right angle, two lines, the triangle on the right is Y. So notice each time we have the altitude squared so far equals X times Y with the cross product. Again, altitude times altitude or altitude squared equals X times Y. So that should come out to be the same here. So this time I'll focus, I'll do the small triangle first. So I'm going to do Y to altitude. And the Y is between one line right angle. So between one line right angle, that's altitude, and then to X. So my cross product last is still the same. Altitude squared equals X times Y. You can also use the method of pulling the two triangles apart separately. So to do that, I'm going to, because I have to slide it up, I'll redraw uh, one of these triangles below so you can see what it looks like before we split them apart. So let's put that right here. There's not much room. But let's draw the triangle facing this way. So here's the original right triangle. And then when we draw the altitude, creates two right angles, and we'll call this, um, I'll actually use segment one and segment two. So if I take a look at this triangle, okay, that would be right here, the shorter leg is segment one, and that longer leg in this case is the altitude. So I just rotated this triangle around and wrote it in this direction. And then anytime I draw a triangle that's similar, I'll always draw it so that it is facing in the same direction, and in this case, just a little bit bigger. So this would actually, you can slide right over to this one, and this is the altitude in segment 
to. So our proportion, um, you can look at it as you know, short leg to long leg equals short leg to long leg as they're drawn separately. So for me, that short leg is segment one to the altitude equals short leg to long leg here would be altitude to segment two. Okay, which is still the same as what's above. So your cross product, this cross product right here, is going to be altitude squared equals segment one times segment two. And we might have just done that a little bit too much, or I might have uh, used too many examples to go over that proportion, but I just wanted to clarify how we do set up the proportion um, because the triangles can be different sizes, and especially when it's like this one here, sometimes it's really hard to tell uh, which is a long leg and short leg, which you could easily, as I used here, to do as you compare long to short leg in the right triangles. But that's not always the case. And two, they're not always drawn to scale, as the directions say. Okay? So the first thing I like to do in each, if you don't memorize the relationship, you don't have to, is again, think about that point of rotation and note the congruent angles. So this angle is going to be congruent to this one, and then this one congruent to that one. And as I said before, I just use the angles to set up my proportion. <coughs> Excuse me. So this proportion, I'm going to do x to 6 on the left. Because the triangles are similar, once again, and corresponding sides are congruent. So my x is the side between the right angle and one dashed line. So right angle and one dashed line would be the 6 in this triangle, and then 2, 9. So x to 6 is equal to 6 to 9. Our cross product, 6 times 6 is 36, equals 9x. Divide by 9, and x is 4. Okay. All right. Um, another proportion results. Okay, so let's know in each, let's start by noting all of the angles that are congruent. So take a minute in each, I'm going to use the black, and note, this time I'll use dots. So this one's congruent to that one. I'll put two since I have more room, and this one's congruent to that one. So go through and note all your congruent angles first, and that will help us. So yeah, look at this one right here. It's hard to tell which is a long leg and short leg. So let's put in which angles are congruent. And then it should be quick in setting up the proportion. Okay, so if you're still putting the dots, just pause and then um, unpause it when you're ready to go over the proportion. So in this case, at the top in that shaded area, it says we're given a leg and a hypotenuse, okay? Uh, and then part of the hypotenuse of the largest triangle. So we're given the leg, and we'll say we're given this leg and the hypotenuse C of the big one, okay? Or let's say we're given this leg and the hypotenuse. We'll go over both scenarios with both legs. So triangles look a little bit different. Again, we'll be given this left leg of the larger triangle and the hypotenuse, or this right leg and hypotenuse. Okay? And then of the smaller triangle, okay, we have to have two sides of a triangle within. So right now we have two, tri two sides of the largest triangle. So then I'm going to give you two sides of one of the smaller triangles within. So say we're looking at this triangle and I give you the X, okay? Or say I give you the other triangle um, because this is the hypotenuse of this one where the A is the hypotenuse of the small one. So 
I will highlight that, I guess, in each case. And then again, say I give you x. All right, so let's write the left side for each. So say I do the a to c, a to c, or b to c, which is the leg and hypotenuse of the largest triangle. What's that going to be equal to as far as the triangle within it? Okay, so the A for me, okay, in this bigger triangle was leg to hypotenuse. So if I do that again, leg to hypotenuse in the orange triangle, that would be X to A. Okay, uh, cross product would be A times A or a squared equals c times x. And that's a bad square. Okay, so in that case, what I did to compare, again, each side was leg to hypotenuse equals leg to hypotenuse. The a, let's go below it again, the leg is the a, the c is the hypotenuse of the bigger triangle. So then of the orange, leg to hypotenuse would be x to c. Or I'm sorry, x to a is the hypotenuse of the orange. And once again, a squared equals c times x. And notice that a is the side that's shared, right? Let's use a different color. Between, I said I don't have too many options, between the two triangles. And the side that's shared in both triangles here, or is overlapping, is the B. I realize that they do, X is a part of C, but they don't actually share that whole side X. So let's still compare um, leg to hypotenuse as I did for B to C. So leg to hypotenuse equals leg to hypotenuse. So leg to hypotenuse B to C, and in this orange triangle, leg to hypotenuse, B is the hypotenuse, so that would go on bottom, leg C. So B times B, we end up with B squared equals C times X. And then last, leg to hypotenuse here in the green, or the big triangle is B to C, so in the orange triangle, leg to hypotenuse would be X to B. And our cross product, B squared equals C times X. Okay? So let's actually, uh, for time's sake too, we don't need, I think these ones are easy to compare um, within the picture because we are just comparing leg to hypotenuse in each. So let's look at number two. Find the value of A. Um, and it's also good to highlight. Okay, so in the big triangle, we are given two sides. And you can pull them out if you want to. So I'm going to compare leg to hypotenuse. So A to 13. And then within the triangle, again, if we look at this one on the right, this right triangle, we're only given the 9. We're not given any other side. So we're going to end up using this triangle as we're given two sides, a leg and a hypotenuse. So comparing here leg to hypotenuse, it would be 4 to A. And remember, you will have that overlapping side being the same or the side that's shared between the two in one of your cross products. So a squared equals 52. And take the square root. And I'm going to move that up here. So a is going to be equal to both the positive and negative, because we took the square root. And 52 largest perfect square factor is 4. 4 times 13, we're going to reject the negative is A is the length of a side. And final answer, A is equivalent to 2 radical 13. Okay, number three. Find BC. So I'm going to call BC X. So that's a part of the larger triangle and the triangle on the left. So I will highlight the triangle on the left, which we have two sides. Good. And we do have two sides of the larger one here in green. I just need to add the 8 and the 2 to get the total hypotenuse of 10. So leg to hypotenuse of green, leg to hypotenuse equals leg to hypotenuse of the pink. 
the leg is 8, and x, once again, this side that's shared, is going to be the same in your cross product. Um, x times x, x squared equals 80. So this time, simplifying the square root of 80, rejecting the negative. Largest perfect square factor of 80 is 16. So final answer, the length of BC is 4 radical 5. Number four. So regions, last two are regions questions. It says in the diagram uh, of right triangle ABC, so that's looking at this big right triangle, we have the altitude BD drawn to the hypotenuse AC, where AC, the length is 16, and the length of CD is 7. So we now know that that's also 9. What is the length of altitude BD? Well, if I look at this triangle on the left, um, there's the x, okay, um, which I'm trying to find. So I do have two sides, okay. I look at the triangle on the right, I have two sides. Um, uh, the biggest triangle, the one in green, I do not have two legs. I don't have two sides altogether, I just have the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the two triangles within. Okay. You can memorize the theorem or, as I suggested before, just put in the angle um, arcs or dots. So this angle right here, whoops, once we rotate about that point, is going to land right here. And then 1, 2 is going to land here after we rotate and dilate. So to set up the proportion, I'm going to do 7 to x. So that's 1 dot to right angle. One dot to right angle would be the x, and right angle to two dots, nine. Okay? And then notice too, x is the side that's shared, which is um, the same in our cross product. So x squared equals 63. Take the square root, and x equals, now it is multiple choice, so I don't have to show the positive and negative roots. And 63, largest perfect square factor is 9. 9 times 7, which reduces to 3 radical 7. All right, last one. So our picture is there. And we have right triangle FGH, so that's the big right triangle. It tells us where the right angle is. Altitude HJ is drawn to FG. FJ is 16, which is noted. HG is 15, which is noted. Determine and state the length of JG. So let's call JG X. Only an algebraic solution will see a full credit. And then determine and state the length of HJ, um, which is the altitude. So right now for the altitude, if we look at the triangles that contain side A, we have two sides here. Right, that's a right triangle. And we also have two sides here, but I have two unknowns. So I can't find the altitude first. In order to find A, we need X. So let's look at the big triangle, leg to hypotenuse. So 15, hypotenuse. So because one segment of the hypotenuse is algebraic, the hypotenuse is going to be algebraic. So 15 to x plus 16. And then I want to use the triangle that had the x in it, which is this one. Okay, so 15 over x plus 16. Now I did leg to hypotenuse uh, in the original. On the left side is how I compared. So I want to compare the same way with that triangle that I highlighted in green. So the leg is the x, and the hypotenuse is 15. So that's going to be x over 15. Now cross product, 15 squared is 225, equals x times x plus 16, which is x squared plus 16x. Because it's a quadratic, we want to set equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 225. And you can complete the square quadratic formula, but I like to factor when possible. So I'm going to set up the two parentheses, x times x. 
Factors of a negative 225 that add to 16 are positive 25 and negative 9. So this factor gives me a root of negative 25, where this factor gives me a root of 9. I don't want the negative length, so let's reject that. And our answer here, we do have a little bit of room, is x, which was jg, is 9. Now we can use that um, to help us find a. So this is now 9. So I'm going to do, I'll put in the dots, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2. So I'm going to do 9 to a, okay? So 9 to a, careful with the 9 and the look of the a, equals, now the 9 was between one dot's right angle, and then one dot right angle is the a in this case, and we know that that shared side should be in one of the cross products. So it's a to 16. So a times a, a squared equals 9 times 16, which is 144, which is a perfect square. So positive and negative 12. But we don't want the negative length, so we reject. And then last, hj is equal to 12.